<sighs> Man, I, I really said I wasn't going to do another vape video, but after watching this shit, I have an obligation to. <laughs> um, people, please, do, do, do not listen to the man I'm about to show you. Uh, th this man, this man is, is deeply and totally confused. Just to make things interesting and to actually get you know, some hits and stuff like that, well, he seems to be advertising his video um, with his Super Sub Ohm .06 build. Well, that's very impressive. Here's the one I just built. That's correct. It's a uh, point zero zero five, as you can see on this Pico. It's not gonna fire. It's not gonna fire. It's it's not even gonna try. So I figured the testing I'll be doing on my brand new little Dimitri clone will uh, make for a pretty interesting video. All right. Let's watch this asshole. Just in case anyone actually thinks I'm bullshitting or whatever. I mean, you'll know I'm not bullshitting. But, yeah. Let me get this in shot. You can skip along if you want to see the comments and stuff like that. People, battery safety is incredibly important. What this man has, has to say is complete malarkey. If you listen to a single thing that this man says, um, you might very well hurt yourself. He has no idea what he's talking about. Sorry. Sorry. Took that out of shot for a second. Trust me, it's the same one. So, yes, uh, it's total and complete malarkey. To go anywhere below 0.10 or 10 milli ohms resistance, you are going to want to go parallel with your batteries. That way, you don't blow one up. Screw this in just a little bit more. There we go. I don't know why you keep screwing all the way out. All right. I'm going to screw this fucker in. Uh, by the way, just a shout out to Mooch and stuff. Um, Mooch, you are God. Thank you so much. You made this build possible, bro. Honestly, I would have. Um, I would have. I, I would have been using old VTC fours that I not realized that VTC five A's are higher capacity, and they have generally the same uh, uh, safe continuous discharge. But we'll get to that in a second. You know what? Fuck this shit. Let's turn on the video and let's get to some vaping super sub omi godness. Point zero six pussy. Hey, so today I want to show you a build that everyone seems to want to call dangerous, and I can see where they're coming from. This is a single tube VCM mech mod, and that is right there quad parallel twist coils running at 0.06 ohms now we get it battery tolerance dual level parallels. for samsung 25r dual is parallels a .05. I win. however Try to get the it hits hard the and it's not blowing up on me so in order to explain the situation better i brought a guy that is the general manager of a vape store and knows how to build. His name is Michael. Matt, Joe. Matt He's going to explain right why there. this build. Okay. The general up. manager so of a vape store. Let me, let me store. break this down to you. So, this me and my buddy have matching builds. Okay, and these matching builds well are in different. The art of electrical they're different engineering. in one way, and that one way is this one is stainless. Right. Let's see. Let's see what this camera is. My father right. worked for Con Ed for forty-two years. This is. Uh, I mean. My excuse this would be better. This is a solid alloy, although this ohms out low too. This is a 008. This is a 006. So long as you're not chain hitting this you device, don't hear me using that. Which I'm gonna pop my. Well, it's kind of dry. So oh, really? I'll use mine is the example. Not chain hitting this which twice. Which is this? And then firing it again, firing again, firing again. You'll be fine. 
because you're initially pulsing the battery to that one second range, taking your hit and exhaling. And when you set it back down, heat's going to dissipate and you're not going to over discharge the battery to the point it's going to vent or explode in, in some case. cases. So yes, this is dangerous, but anytime you use an unregulated device, regardless, it's dangerous. There's electricity. The only truth There's thing no regulations. It can blow up. You could have a shit battery and a shit wrap and watch it vent the minute you touch it. And you could have a 0.14 build. I've watched it. It happens. However, him, with this build, nope, and the way he vapes, yes, I will not recommend this for beginners. However, since he's vaped for a while and he's experienced, he knows that he's not going to chain hit the hell out of this to the point the battery is going to vent. It's also quite difficult to vent a 25R. And if you can vent a 25R easily, come into my store and show me. The, the, the general manager of a vape store wants you to go into his store and show him that you can vent a 25R. Do I get a prize for doing so? Because, because I could use some free shit, plus humiliating you. I, I, I mean, you're the general manager of a vape store, and instead of you know promoting safety for your products and stuff like that, you're asking your customers to come in and blow up the battery just because you got uh, ego to feed. Good job, bro. Because I had a girl vent a 25R on one of these, and she chain hit that thing like no tomorrow. I'm talking hit, 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 square juice, hit, 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 square juice. That, that fast. That will, yes, blow your battery up. This for the most part, is safe. Mine, 008, maybe a hair saver. Still quite dangerous, technically, as the chart says. I run VTC4, VTC5. Okay. Uh, let's uh, pull up Steam Engine real quick, buddy. Okay. So let's do, a, let's do an Ohm's Law calculator. Let's say we're running at 3.7 volts. It's an optimal battery voltage. Three point seven, and uh, let's do point oh eight. Um, yeah, you're not doing a point oh eight because you would be, um, y you would, you would melt. You would melt. That's uh, that's eighteen hundred watts of power. I don't think it, you're point oh oh eight, Mr. General Manager. Let's say you're 0 0.08. Well, you're drawing 46 amps, which is higher than you know the standard 30 amp uh, continuous draw you know, for safety that most batteries you know that are used have. Um, but you're not so far ahead that you're going to vent it just by pressing the power button. Your buddy, who's 0.06. By contrast, well, he's drawing 61 amps from the battery. That means that if he wanted to be within a safe continuous draw rating of, say, Sony VTC4s, as they claim, Mooch has uh, substantial evidence actually to prove otherwise, check it out, uh, at 3.7 volts, um, first of all, it's uh, uh, 228 watts of power. And now it's jumped up to 61 amps. So that's going to be, oh, uh, that's uh, 45 to 60. Hey, Mr. General Manager, can you help me out with that one? I'm not so good at the math stuff. I'm not a general manager or anything like that. I, I think it's uh, I think it's about 33% more, more current draw than your .008 build not counting things like voltage drop and stuff like that, which let's say it's a fully charged battery and uh, and you get 3.7 volts, you know, you have a shitty mech mod or something like that with a lot of voltage drop. Uh, this is not nearly as safe as 45 amps continuous draw because now we're at 200% of a safe continual draw rating, allegedly, under ideal conditions, um, versus simply being... Uh, I don't know, 50% uh, above uh, above the max rated safety safety limit. Well, let's continue. He's the general manager of a vape store. He must know something. Five inside 25R batteries in my tube, and it's perfectly fine. 
So they're identical builds. There is nothing wrong Good with for this. You. For all you regulated users, you're on a series or S2P device. Yes, you should not build at 006. You should be able between, and this is extraordinary low, 0 0.14, 0 0.2. That makes more sense. On a regulated device, unregulated series users, 0 0.2. Um, parallel, 008. You know, if you have MOS, MOSFET protection and stuff, you don't want to go lower than 008. I've watched parallel boxes on Copper Context. Cherry Bomber, prime example. 006 builds, blow clouds. I don't see people blowing their Cherry Bombers up in my store. So, and I say this with a grain of salt because, yes, there are going to be some people who are going to chain hit their Mac or chain hit something and vent batteries. You cannot say this is dangerous or more dangerous than any other build. Just because it's super low ohms, you're at 4.2 volts. Yes, you can. You can most certainly say that this is way more dangerous, but it's that little bit of danger that makes it so much fun. Am I right? Um, no, you're, uh, again, you're spreading misinformation to try and make, uh, I guess, garner some business for yourself, even though um, I feel bad for the people who are attracted to your store based on your your seeming disregard for their safe for your customer safety and all that but you know it's just as dangerous as any really low build okay or anything on a regular uh, really? yet it's still dangerous no matter how you look at it because shit can fail if the battery fails it will blow up or vent if you have a high quality battery it will vent in a very mild fashion sometimes it can vent in a very aggressive or dangerous fashion which means you know the core blows up and, and get little pieces of metal go pow now, I know some people are also saying that the Samsung 25R, it amps at what? 20 amps? 20 amps. Well, the problem is when you pulse it, it can pulse. It doesn't amp at 20 amps. It has a safe maximum continu continuous draw rating of 20 amps. That's what Samsung says that their battery is good for on a continuous draw. What he's about to say is something called anecdotal evidence. Check this out. See if you can hear it. It's up to 100 amps. Yes. So if you're doing a 0.04, or no, a 0.06 build, the ampage, I apologize for that drop. We're going to fix that the right ampage. there. The ampage of the it ampage. is only going up to about 75 amps, if I did Ohm's Law correctly. If you build a 0.04. No, you did not, because you didn't take into account things like voltage sag. This mod... There's no fucking voltage sag. Period. There's none. It's so goddamn simple, this Dimitri clone. Other mods? No. They have voltage, they have voltage sag. Yeah. Er, where is my chin bone? No. Oh, the prime example of your standard suit mech. Alright. It's also a piece of shit. Here's your standard tube mech. It's got a firing button, a copper negative pin, a 510 collar, if you don't have a hybrid. This is your positive pin returning back to the battery, and an adjustable telescoping thing. All right. Let's see. From the battery, it has to go through the pin. That's a point of resistance. Through the pin... It has to go through the switch. It's another point of resistance. Um, after that, it's got to go through the locking collar into the body, because that's its next stop. That's another point, two points of resistance. Uh, then it's got to go into the... No, it's actually got to go through the collar, collar next. Another point of resistance. Then it's got to go through the atomizer. Another point of resistance. Then after it cycles through your coils, major points of resistance, then it goes through the positive contact back into the battery. Up oh, and this telescoping thing, which is yet another point of resistance. So, on a freshly charged battery, hopefully it's a 4.14 to 4.15 volts max, not the full 4.2. That's uh, That's kind of unnecessary and uh, not really good for the battery um, you can look at an average voltage sag all the way down I'd say 4 volts is kind of like a reasonable expectation and even so and even so this is just under ideal circumstances let's not forget that there are 
adds other points of resistance, all that dried up juice, more resistance, oils from your skin, more resistance, not having clean contacts, more resistance, I mean, pins not tight enough, more resistance, the list goes on and on. Let's Five, you're going up to about 84. This now, what if you're building at a 0.04? Well, then you're discharging at about 105 amps. If this pulse is at 100 amps and you're pulsing at 105, yes, the battery is going to vent. You do not build at a 0.04. Over discharging it. This oh, what happened to your pulsing your battery? It's not going to vent if it's drawing 100 amps. Just be like a teeny second. My chances are, you know, actually, I'm going to say it might, it might not. It's kind of hard to say. Each battery you get is as different from each other as different brands. You know, two, two of the same make can have completely different uh, 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 flaws in their cores. It may not show immediately, but certainly over time, I mean, you're going to notice it. And that's another thing to take into account. A brand new battery, freshly charged, say straight from the factory, uh, A-grade, you know, uh, top Top shelf core, not meant for you or I, or you know any of us mortal scum. Uh, one of those versus your standard. I say I owned it for eight months, and you know I, I I kind of overdo it sometimes on how long I keep it in the mod before I swap it out for a new battery. Yeah, standard wear and tear and stuff like that. They're going to perform completely different. Uh, I would say that one of those is much less likely to vent. I'll let you decide which one. Give me this on. has a peak. The minute I go whoop and I'm on there like that, that's that's basically the pulse hit for, for that one second. Then it's the sustain, okay? I love that pulse hit. I love I love that pulse hit. First it's a pulse hit, then it's a sustain hit. Okay. Okay. Every hit is a sustain hit. Every hit is a sustain hit. The actual formula for which they determine these these safe limits for continual draw is based on exactly that continual draw. Basically from full capacity to no capacity on at which ones did they have the least problems at or rather, we, uh, could be said would be the safest the safest ones. It's not to say that they didn't have plenty that were running at 60 amps continuously that didn't have any problems with venting, or maybe even higher, you know, uh, again, those A-list cores that Mooch keeps talking about that I still have yet to see. I, I assume I'm going to find it one day on the back of a unicorn. Um, yeah, so, so, so if you don't know this already a, pul a pulse limit means a, a pulse rating means absolutely nothing it is completely 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 ridiculous uh, a battery is more than capable of discharging its entire capacity now listen very carefully it is more than capable of discharging its entire capacity instantaneously it's just a really really bad bad scenario to be in. You do not want to be in the same room. I, I was going to say state, uh, but I wouldn't want to be in the same state because I'd want to see, you know, the shrapnel and stuff like that. So long as no one got hurt. I like blowing. I like stuff that blows up. It's fun. Um, yeah, I, it, it can discharge its entire capacity instantaneously keep in mind electricity on earth moves almost as fast as the speed of light it might as well be said to run at the speed of light so instantaneously by any of our earth or even local universal standards it can drain its entire capacity at that point it would probably blow up so to say that it can discharge 100 amps well duh it can discharge its entire Capacity. Please keep that in mind. Okay. Keep going. So this gets so hot so fast, if he hits it for one second, he can let off it, continue to hit for another half second, and then exhale and blow a hell of a cloud. I'll use mine as the example. May I show? Oh, of show. course. Okay. Count one second. Yes, you may one, show. Uh, one. One, uh, one. Okay.
this is a metronome. This is something musicians use to keep in time. It measures time in something called beats per minute. So 60 beats per minute is going to equate one click, you'll see in a second, per second. Uh, one. Actually, he's pretty close. No, uh, one. That's what he did, right? Put him up to the metronome test. And let off it, continue to hit for another half second, and then exhale and blow a hell of a cloud. I'll use mine as the example. May I show? Oh, of show. course. Okay, count one second. One. Actually, that's two seconds, buddy. So you actually counted off two seconds. I uh, love you. I uh, love, 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 love your scientific method, man. I mean, you really got your shit down in terms of like measurement and stuff like that. Not that measurement is really important in science, I guess. No, There's no like, I don't know, international system for like cataloging it so you know we can do science right and stuff. But yeah. well, ah, one is a is a unit. But he's not overcharging the battery. Residual heat. That's from residual heat for my bill. You can still get a nice hit. It's, you don't see my all brass PC I'm blowing the hell up. I think enough has been said. Yes, if you're a beginner and you're talking to me about battery safety, but you're running on a regulated K box or you're running on a Segeli 150 don't or a Don't build below 0.2. Don't period. build below 0.2. Why? If you don't know how batteries work and if you don't feel safe, you don't have to. But don't sit there and criticize a .06 bill because you don't fully understand it. Yes, the 25R. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, are you butthurt? I, I, I said part of the thrill on this is the fact that we could absolutely die from using this. I mean, this, this shit is, uh, this, this is just getting stupid. If you want to post a video that has a topic of battery safety, the very first thing you must live under the assumption is that everything you will do ever do in terms of possessing, ma uh, maintaining, um, transporting, or using any sort of battery or, or DC related power source based device, a a a any sort of, of wireless battery powered device. The very first thing you must accept is that everything you will do if you're playing outside the safe zone, uh, will cause you to blow up. You you will you will you are you are going to blow up. You are there is nothing you can do about it. If you don't live with that with that anvil over your head, you I, I mean it'll become a reality. If you live, however, under the assumption that that it's going to blow up the second you hit that button, then you're then you're being safe. You, being safe does it means not being comfortable, but being comfortable with not feeling safe. That's safety, right there. If you are able to not feel comfortably safe, but you are comfortable with how with how uncomfortable you are regarding your safety. That means you're you're doing it right. You're 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 being you're being as safe as you could possibly be. What's the point of preaching safety if you're not if you're not accepting the Armageddon results? Let's continue. It has a 20 amp pulse. This pulse is to 100 amps, and it's a 25 R. That's the same battery I have right here, a 25 R. Did it explode Big on deal. me? No. Did it vent on me? No. If I'm an idiot and chain hit it, it will. However, it didn't. You just have to understand how batteries and coils work. If you're talking to me you too. about my yeah. mech mod, oh, I'm chain hang. Well, I'm chain hang right now. Technically, technically, this is chain hang. Technically, hitting. tell me how hot that is. It's warm, right? It's warm. It's slightly not slightly warm. All right, and what battery am I on? Out of curiosity. The chassis is slightly warm. He's not even feeling the battery, even if this were an accurate measurement of just about anything. I mean, guys, guys, really, I, I, I. I don't think I have to spell this out for too many people out there. I'm sure there are tons of rational people out there who see the problem with saying, feel that battery, is it hot? No. Well, do you guys know what the general accepted uh, operating ma uh, operating maximum of, a, uh, of, of an 18650 battery is? It's about 45 degrees Celsius. I mean, it, it, it'll get warm to the fucking touch. Uh, 
typically they say that venting will occur at uh, at about 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, some, somewhere around there. And so, but but you will notice 45 to 45 degrees Celsius. That's that's pretty hot. Um, that's actually that's coming on over a hundred over a hundred degrees. You you'll feel it. You'll feel it for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, and this is all overlooking. Hey, does this feel hot versus doing something the right way, like I don't know, taking a taking a, a, a temperature strip or something scientific, you know? I've seen them attached to, you know, multimeters like this one. Oh, um, I, I, I just noticed that uh, that Mr. General uh, Vape Manager doesn't uh, doesn't seem to have any sort of electronic monitoring devices or anything like that. I, I know I haven't been hitting this thing. It, it, to be honest, it's actually kind of kind of like overwhelmingly hot, but. Um, Right before I, 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 I did that, I, I volt tested my batteries from uh, uh, that I did a baseline before I left the house today. And over the course of the day, I went from 4.14 volts on both these batteries. They are in parallel to 3.84 volts. I'm pretty close to the optimal to the optimal voltage on these guys. And um, I used this to confirm my findings. So I log that, I log this information. This is my AB rotation. I have my CD rotation in a very safe, protective sleeve. Um, actually, it's a really nice little plastic case, I gotta, I, I gotta admit. Uh, but, in, you know, I found out that this, that this iStick is a reliable way of testing resistance because I actually use the multimeter to test the resistance of my coils. Actually, I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. Here's a good safety lesson for you. Let me pull up OBS real quick and see if I'm in focus. Or something. So, if you don't know how to test the resistance of your coils using a multimeter, and you happen to have one lying around, I don't know, dads, uncles, friends, whatever, but you're not too sure on how a multimeter works. Uh, I mean, you don't really have to know how it works. You just have to know that it does work. Some are better than others. Fluke, in my opinion, makes the best multimeters. So, find a nice, comfortable place to set it. Doesn't really matter where. Okay. Now, here's the uh, RDA that I'm working with. The copper pin, as I said before, is going to be the positive pin. It is adjustable to fit a wide variety of devices. It's a very good feature and a must-have for anyone interested in, in use it going unregulated at all. Um, so being that that's the positive pin, this, uh, this red tester will touch very simply over here. And before I do that, I have to obviously turn on the multimeter. I turned it on to ohms. It's signified by the omega sign. That is the SI symbol for the ohm, or unit of electrical resistivity. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch both of these prods at the same time. Time, and I'm going to hold it there until the screen registers zero. And why am I going to do this? I'm going to do this because by default the, ohm, the multimeter is not calibrated. It needs, it should be calibrated at every time, every time. So if I were to put this on right now, it's showing uh, 0.1. It's going to show a resistance that is point that is one deci ohm higher than the actual resistance. Now, once I've zeroed them out, now it is safe. Positive, in my case, red, most often red, on the positive pin. Negative. 
on the side on the side threads it's actually registering trying to register below one deci ohm so I'm going to manipulate the range because I am going to need mealy It's very simple. All you need is steady hands. Remember, red touches positive. Black touches the threads. It's negative. It should say 0.5. Dang it. I can't get a good contact. My hands are not steady. I do apologize. Calibrate first. Okay. Zero it out. Let's take it. Huh, it's not registering anything. I might not have it set to the right range. After confirming that the Pico was in fact good enough, okay. I have a reading of 0 0.2 over here. Read the next screen. Kili, kilo, mega, and ohm. Don't you love metric? So here's ohm. Oh, that's why, because I set it to kilo. Now, 0, 0, 0.5 is where it's sort of zeroing out to, and 0, 0, 0.5 because typically ohms are actually read in deci ohms. So milli ohms comes after uh, comes a little bit further. Not de not deci ohms. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, centi centi ohms centi ohms. I believe it's on centi on this one. Mega ohm. There's several modes. I can't remember which one actually works for measuring this low. I'm not even registering. It might honestly be too low. But uh, the outside the threading will be the negative. And the inside center solid would be the positive. It's very simple. I was getting a couple of weird readings out there, but if I put it back on here, on the Pico, it will in fact show it yet again. Point zero five. Or, yes, five milli ohms. So 
sorry, am I saying mealy? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I was just preaching metric. It's, uh, it's senti, senti, oh, I'm sorry, senti, excuse me. Okay, let's get back to this fun shit. Hmm. And I know this does not have a 100 amp pulse. I think this has a 40 amp pulse. Oh, 50 C5, imagine that. That does not have a 100 amp pulse. And that's not really exploded. low. Not I have exploded. a friend that comes in with a Sub-Zero mod that has a build that's 005. That is the maximum discharge rate, and then some above what a VTC5 can handle. Run the same battery. Does it blow up in his face? No, he just doesn't chain hit it. It's common sense. Heat's gonna cause it, cause the core to be rough. Bang. Or I have VTC5 if it discharges A's. so fast it just vents instantly, well, but I've got two of you them might have an explosion. However, That's he took I'm that safe. risk just to prove a point how safe these batteries are. These batteries are quite safe. And we're in a dangerous level of ohm laws, technically. You know, it's that red area, as people talk about. However, the device, how long you're hitting, what kind of metal your coils are out of, how the electricity is going to flow through them. This is stuff you need to educate yourself on if you are going to build this low, okay? I've been vaping six years. I know. You should not do this, technically. Technically. I'm going to do it because it works for me, and I blow a nice cloud, and I only have to hit it for a second and a half, and I feel safe still. I have not yet vented a battery in six years. I will repeat. In six years, I have not vented a battery. And it's I've always built seven something years. lower than this. I think it was 005. Just out of curiosity. Exactly. Now, if you don't feel safe using this, cool. Buy an RX200. Buy a mutation RDA and blow clouds. However, I'm on an unregulated mech. Why would I not push it to its potential to see what its potential is? And this is a 0.06. Yes, we're in the danger zone. Yes, its discharge rate is going to be at around 80 some amps if we do Ohm's law correctly. As long as I don't discharge past 100 amps, it's not going to vent on me very easily. As soon as I feel that it's hot, set it down, wait five minutes, guaranteed it's going to be good to hit Let's again. See. So I'll be hitting this pretty good. Let's see. It's warm, a little warmer, but as soon as I feel that thing hot, this I'm probably down. solid 65, 70 degrees, maybe right now. Yeah. If that actually now it's cooling off, so now it's probably about 60. So, and you see me in the background, I'm going to town. Going Let's vape to this town. again. I mean, I just dripped it. Milky buns, lucky. Good juice. Tastes like lucky charms. Lucky okay. charms with a hint of fruity pebbles on the exhale. Oh, look, I'm pulsing. <laughs> that was a long ass hit. Damn. That look, was the longest Sergey, hit. I think the battery vented. Oh, look, no, it still works perfectly fine. Perfectly safe. Blows big clouds. Yes, this is not a competition build. Regulations for a competition build are 0.1 point point ohms. Yes. Point 0.1. It sucks. I get it. But this is for me, personally, I wanted to blow huge-ass clouds to the limit. I wanted to see what the I potential was. I wanted to see how these things work. I know they work at 0.06 ohms. I know they work at 0.05 ohms. You just have to know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, buy a regulated box, buy a regulated mod, you'll be fine. But if you have an unregulated device, this is running at 300 watts right now, why not push it? Don't vent the battery. If you want to stay safe, okay. But that's like, what? That's like floating in the 9 Perfectly fine. Residual heat. I got way too many now, juice That's what here. I tell like people. Spiking. When you're chain hitting your shit, okay? I don't understand why people do it. I could hit this for a half second and still get a big cloud. On the button. Half second on the button. That's just from residual heat. It's probably still. Yeah. Still got some in it. That's why I build low. That's why I build low. It, it, it heats the coil up fast, gets really hot. I don't have to hold the button forever. That's why I build low, okay? That being said, why would, if the heat's gonna max out on the coil, okay, to the point where either you're gonna run out juice quick or burn the cotton, hit it to its maximum potential, you could feel the warmth, and let off. <sighs> and the warmth will stay, it's gonna stay, it's gonna stay, and then you're gonna blow a cloud, and you're like, damn, that's a big cloud, I was only on a button for a second. Why? That's why I build the coil's real hot. It's, hot it's personal preference. That's, it's the difference between an automatic car and a manual car. Right. You have to feel the manual right. car. But you have to understand the cars. Right. You can pop the clutch if you're an idiot, and set it through a wall and if it's in gear, but at the same time too, it's like, yeah, all right, so this is a manual car as an example. However, I still need to learn how to drive the manual car, make sure I'm doing it properly. And I know what can happen, what can go wrong if I float gears or if I like the power shift. You that's know? just the same turbo. Thing as that's just putting a turbo on a car. What's or the damn difference? Yeah, you're dealing with something that could be explosive, is. but it's explosive if you don't know what you're doing. Throw that's too, the only. Throw too much boost for your motor and it goes kaboom. Yeah, that's about it. 
So I think the argument is valid. We know what we're doing. There we go. All right. This is a long video. Thank you guys for staying through this. Finally, I burnt off enough juice on here that I can actually start tasting some shit. I mean, you've heard my thoughts throughout this entire video. I'm, I'm rebutting almost every other second. It's, it's basically unwatchable. I really, 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 really hope that uh, that you people real that people realize what misinformation looks like and know to steer clear away for this. But for people who are actually decent people who are looking to have fun, but responsibly, safely, in a way that doesn't present. Uh, prominent danger, let's say, to themselves or to nearby innocent bystanders. You know, your basic run of the mill average show. People who don't have any prior education on this matter, this is this is going to seem like reliable information. It's not. There's not one single point of reliable in, in information in this. Now, to get here, I typed in 0.06 ohm build because I was actually looking to build this low for myself. And I've actually done one up. I gotta figure out a better way to wick this. I'm gonna weird kind of taste off of this. But um anyways. So people, this is misinformation. If you don't know any better and all the warnings haven't kept you away from wanting to use mech mods and build super low and stuff like that to your funeral. At least at least there are are people like myself, yeah, I'm going to promote myself over here because I actually do know what I'm talking about. And, um, and you know, it's not just my safety, it's everybody else's around you. You have to think about that. If one of these things explodes, it, it can be pretty violent. And somebody who's not you, who's an unwilling bystander, can get hurt. You need to take that into consideration. Um, but how else does one get here? This is why I'm even posting this in the first place. Battery safety for mechanical modes. So 200k. This. Mad vapes. Yeah, this is one of the top. One of the top vid uh, videos. On battery safety. For whatever okay. sick reason, this has 11,000 views and 91 thumbs up. I'm just reading the comments right now. I never actually read them. Thank you for making this video. I was skeptical over builds below 0.1 on a single tube mech mod. Chain vaping explains all the problems I've heard about these builds. And I can't thank you guys enough for clearing this up to the public. There's a, there's a lot, a lot more reasons than that. That's, that's not even one of the top reasons. <sighs> Douchebag, so cringe. I chain vape 0 0.03, 0 0.06, builds on my BTC 5As all the time, never had an accident. You still live? No reply, no more, fucking liar. Am I lying, guys? I mean, this is a 0.05 built with nichrome wire by the way i forgot to mention that this is built with uh nichrome 80 26 gauge parallel 
dual coil. So, all in all, this is this is a pathetic example of a a YouTube video in the first place. This is more like a a, a rant. And, oh, all, all these people are haters. I'm so cool and edgy, and I'm just being me and stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you why I built. Point zero five. I did it because I'm an asshole and because I like to be an asshole. I like to show this in people's faces and get all the impressed reactions and stuff like that and while I'm still standing here. Yes, I like to feel good about myself when I accomplish certain things. Not that this is much of an accomplishment, but still, you know, it's pretty fucking cool, I think, at least. And um, that's why I do it. I'm not going to even pretend that it's any other reason. 0.12 vapes better than 0 0.05 by by far. Anyways, for those of you who made it through all of this, or at least some of this, uh, it, it, I, I thank you because 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 uh, you actually make me feel better that that you're watching me. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not even I'm not even gonna humble myself out out, out on this shit. Um, I, I'm I, I'm not I'm not I'm sorry. They're wrong. I'm right. Listen to me because, well, listen to me. <laughs> or don't. That's, that, that's fine. Listen to them. Knock yourself out. So who should you check for battery safety? You really want to check a video that goes in depth into battery safety. Here's one. Uh, Never Google uh, or YouTube battery safety. Please look up Ohm's law. It is a law. It is the law that that every circuit operates under. It's simply the proportion of what is which that is needed that is needed or what currently runs within a circuit of any kind. It is a fact. It is law. Those proportions are always going to are always going to match up, uh, no matter what faulty circuit, working circuit, closed circuit, open uh, open circuit. Doesn't do, does not really matter. AC DC does not matter. The, the the law is proportions. It's like Pythagorean theorem. It's really not hard to get, and there are calculators available if you're unsure of any objective information. This guy at New Amsterdam Vape, he knows what is what he's talking about. If you want a short video, if you want a longer one. Check out Mooch. Mooch is honestly the only guy you should really be giving any serious attention to. Like, you, you shouldn't even listen to me uh, over Mooch. <laughs> Mooch has actually done the research and uh, is really the only consumer standard that we have for basing any objective information on batteries and stuff like that. So, obviously, I highly recommend that uh, you go check out his stuff. This guy, uh, the guy's doing some really good shit for us. All right, so what did we learn today? If people are talking okay. about safety, so today I want to show you a build that everyone seems to want to call dangerous, and I can see where they're coming from. This is a single tube, and they start off by saying, "And I see where they're coming from," but then go to deny that uh, that there's any real danger. You get the picture. This is this is the shame on these guys for for putting people at risk. Enough said. For those two, if you're watching this video, uh, fuck you. And, and 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 I really mean that. I I I mean I mean fuck you. I, I have no, nothing more to say. Seriously, I'm trying to think of something. Just fuck you. And then you can just stay, stay away from me. <sighs> the worst kind of idiot. The self-righteous idiot. Alright. I'm done with this extremely, extremely, extremely long video. If you have any questions, ask Mooch. If you can't get in touch with him, you can ask me. If I don't know the answer, I will ask Mooch. <laughs> so, I mean, 
That's basically how it's going to work. Um, yeah. Be careful. Be careful, people. The danger is, is just as real as, as the fun. Stay safe. Have fun. And you'll live to have more fun. This is Savory Milkman with the very last video about vaping ever. Signing off.